Back live in New York, I'm Brent Musburger, and Irv and I were just talking about what the loss of Kenny Houston means to the Washington Redskins. The safety man turned the wrong way, and Dickey burned him for the Packers' last touchdown. Quickly to the board, a lot of surprises this afternoon. Tampa Bay is insisting that Chicago get back in the hunt. Doug Williams has thrown three interceptions, and Chicago leads Tampa Bay 14-0 in the second. Philadelphia apparently going to be in the playoffs as of sunset tonight. All they need is a win. It's been easy so far, 24 zip over Detroit. Green Bay and Washington, the game you're watching, and now the Redskins desperately need a win. They must come back in the second half of this one. The New York Jets are ahead of Baltimore. 13-3 is the count in that game. Todd, three yards to Barkham, and Dave Jacobs, two field goals for Walt Michaels, 28 and 27 yards. It was easy for Pittsburgh. They ran up a 24-0 count. Back then came Cincinnati, 29-yard pass, Anderson to Isaac Curtis, and Isaac Curtis is well now for the Bengals. 7-3 in the cold in Buffalo. The Bills on a 50-yard interception by Steve Freeman lead the Broncos, and the Broncos need that victory as they pursue San Diego. Tough game here in the snow in Cleveland, tied at 7. Campbell from 11 yards out for the Oilers. Sipe, 42 yards to Mike Pruitt. The Browns touchdown. San Francisco and St. Louis are scoreless. The Cardinals without their coach who was fired earlier this week, Bud Wilkinson. And Kansas City leads Seattle 7-0, 28 yards, Fuller to J.T. Smith. Let's show you some highlights now. The Tampa Bay kicking game, four kicks blocked last week against Minnesota. Not any better on this Sunday afternoon against the Chicago Bears. It was a block kick that set up Chicago's first score as they came pouring in on the Tampa Bay punter, and Lee Coons got all over it. The Bears then recovered it, and from there, Walter Payton was able to score his 60th career touchdown, which ties him for the all-time Bear leadership. Here he is, ramming in for the six points. Extra point made it 7-0. Gary Fensick then had one of the three interceptions off Doug Williams, and the Bears were in business again. Here comes the run back by Fensick to set it up, and it was Dave Williams running a pattern for Mike Phipps, hit him with the score, and it is 14-0 with time running out in the first half in Tampa Bay. Er? Running out in the first half in Philadelphia, Brent, of course, the Eagles lead the Detroit Lions by a commanding 24 to nothing score. Harold Connick has caught two touchdown passes so far. We've got a couple of minutes left to go at halftime. Ron Jaworski in the first quarter. Goes this big receiver right here. He keeps his catching streak alive to 110 games, setting up a scoring opportunity later with Wilbert Montgomery, 7-0 Philadelphia. Jaworski again going up on top, going to number 17, a corner pattern. Touchdown, Philadelphia, and the Eagles seem to have a cakewalk in hand, 14-0 early in the ball game. Jaworski going up once again, his favorite target. Carmichael touchdown, and the Eagles lead at halftime, or well, just a couple seconds left to go in half by score, 24 to nothing. They are at the half now in Tampa Bay, still 14-0, Chicago over the Buccaneers. The game you're watching, of course, Washington and Green Bay. Started out as though it might be easy for the Redskins. Joe Theismann here to Ricky Thompson. Thompson at the one-yard line, crashed in for the touchdown. It was 7-0, Skins. But Lynn Dickey is directing the Packers now for Bart Starr. Over the middle to Walter Tullis. And this was a 52-yard touchdown play. And again, the Redskins secondary is burned for the first time. Theismann threw a bad pass right here. Intercepted in the end zone. Badly underthrown receiver that time. Down came the Packers. Up over the top went Nate Simpson. It was 14-7. Then with time running out of the second period, here was the bomb. Dickey. And again, the Packers have scored, and oh, the loss of Kenny Houston for the Redskins. He will be out for the remainder of the season because of a broken wrist. And the NFL Today will continue on CBS after these messages from your local station. Central. My high school class is naming me Man of the Year. And the old flames return to Archie Bunker's place. I see it. This is CBS.
Coming up next on CBS, one of three doubleheader games. The Atlanta Falcons will be playing the San Diego Chargers. The Minnesota Vikings are in the Los Angeles Coliseum for an appointment with the Rams. And the key attraction, the New York Giants are in Dallas to take on the troubled Cowboys. The Cowboys have lost three straight. In fact, you have to go back to this rally for their last victory. 121 left. Roger Staubach trying to rally against the Giants. The Cowboys are behind. Third and two. He hits Drew Pearson. First down at the 29. From the shotgun again. Staubach to Pearson. And he gets to the 45. Now the screen pass to Tony Dorsett. 33-yard gain. And Dorsett got down to the Giants' 12-yard line. With the seconds running out, Raphael Septian kicked the field goal that gave the Cowboys a 16-14 victory. Now it's rematch time. Tom Landry, how improved are the Giants? I don't see a real major improvement other than they've won more games. You know, they've lost one or two along the way, too, but they, uh, they know they can win now, and they're very confident. They're playing very good defensive football. Uh, Tampa Bay beat them. Uh, pretty well, but they did it mostly on passing and, and turnovers. But, but they're a good defensive team. Our offense is going to play awful well. Herb, I think we should add that if the Cowboys had lost that game to the Giants, that losing streak would now be five because they had lost the week before to Pittsburgh. Now, you have been following the Dallas Cowboys very carefully. What's wrong with the team this year? You know, I don't think there's anything fundamentally wrong with the team, Brent. They're still a great football team, but in the last five games, the Cowboys have turned the ball over 13 times and only taken it away once. And you can't win with that kind of football. All right. How do you like today's game against the Giants? Will they come back at home or still more trouble ahead for them? They're going to have trouble on the hands of the Giants because the Giants have a championship defense. They are a quality defensive football team, but when the Cowboys have their backs against the wall, you know, you have to go along with them. All right. Herb, there's one other player that I want to mention in the National Football League. You saw him in action on Thursday night. He's been a longtime star around the league. Then he was a bench warmer until the second half, and out he came again. Bob Greasy directing the Miami Dolphins to a come-from-behind victory over the New England Patriots. This one to Tony Nathan, then you'll see the touchdown pass to Nat Moore. Forget the stats. Bob Greasy was benched for Don Strzok, and he handled it like a gentleman. And when the time came, Greasy was ready to do the job. He has been knocked by broadcasters. He has been knocked by other quarterbacks. But he demonstrated once again that he is an extremely high-class human being. Now let's send you back to the stadium. 